Between the villages of Menla and Munave lies the townland of Kilbeg. I'm here to meet Johnny Dolly, a man whose family history of blacksmithing goes back a number of generations in East Galway. Dolly's forge was well established in the local area. Firstly, Johnny tells me about his great-grandfather, the master blacksmith Peter Dolly. He came from Ray Hill and all the family down there were blacksmiths. Where was his forge, Johnny? In, on that road down to Abinakmai. Now, he was um, what was known, I think, as a master blacksmith because he had a big connection with the Frenches in Monave. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, they built the place here because he was showing their horses and fixing their machinery and all that. So, Peter, your great-grandfather, he worked exclusively then for the Frenches? It is, yes. Actually, I believe Peter's brother was a blacksmith as well, was he? He was, yeah. He stayed in Ray Hill, yeah. Your great-grandfather, let's go to your grandfather next. What do we know about him? He was a blacksmith as well. And where was his forge? Oh, here, he worked here. Kilbeg, Mulvey, yeah. So it's right next door to your current house? Yes, yes. Okay. What kind of an area would he have serviced around here? Oh, a lot of villages, Ray Hill, Clumcurrian, Dunan. Ray uh, Tai Quinn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't working for the Frenches? Well, he used to do work for the Frenches as well. Okay. And the Frenches didn't always come here with horses either. The, he went to the Castle Yard to show the horses up there. Maybe one day in the month or something like that. Now, would you and the horses have been his main occupation or what else would he have been doing for the people around the place? Oh, the, all the fair machinery, ploughs, arrows. That was the only machinery they had them change her. Talk to me a little bit about your own father then, the next generation. Let's go down to that. What was your father's name and how he got into the blacksmithing as well? Peter. So they all learned it from the people before them. <laughs> so he would have been working in this forge next door as well? Yes, yeah. Do we know anything about the operation of the forge, how it worked at the time? Do you know how the bellows was worked? There was a pole coming out here. Every visitor that came in got the job to blow the... F- a few poles now and again, you know, you'd blow up the fire. So I brought in over the garage today, and our pinchers there, you can see left by the fire. They use that for taking off the old shoes, you know, the wooden shoes. And was that from your father's forge? It was, yeah. Wow. It looks to be a small implement, but it's heavy. It's heavy. Yeah. (laughs) Now... Your dad was very involved, I suppose, around the time of the War of Independence and there was a lot happening around this this general area at the time. Can you tell me a little bit of what you know was happening that time? Well, my mother blamed blamed the Black and Tans for his death anyway. They brought him out in the middle of the night and they nearly killed him with the bait in the game, you know. But he worked for years after that as well, you know. Well, that ambush now, I suppose, half a mile from here, the Minovia side of us here, that might have started it too. They probably found out who were in it, you know. Well, as you saw there, they were training in Peak, and they used to meet at the back of McGann's and run away down that road to the back of McGann's. That's where they used to meet. What Johnny describes relates to the Killaclaw raid in June of 1920, when an ambush was prepared by a group of local volunteers for a party of RIC, who were expected to accompany a boycotted local farmer, Hutchinson of Ballyban, Skahanna. The RIC eventually retreated under safe cover, but those suspected of involvement, including Johnny's father, Peter, suffered the repercussions. The Killaclaw raid was targeted at Alex Hutchinson, whose name appears in the ledger from French's estate as one of their tenants. Yes, there was uh, two Dolly brothers now from the Arabian Akmai. They'd be related as well, you know. But uh, the Black Tens were after them, so I was trying to find them. And they had to go to a house up in Cla. Clonan's house. Sonny Clonan himself, he's dead now. He lived here near me. He told me they spent a full 12 months at the house. They were afraid to go home, afraid they'd be found. In that 12 months, they went home one night, winter's night. They went down in the dark. And that night, they were gone, the Black and Tens invaded their house, searching for them. That was a close <laughs> It was, it was, uh, They came back again the next night. The brothers came back to the house. But I think there was a lot of activity in this area, wasn't there, during the, there the War of Independence? Right. Like, And blacksmiths, I suppose, because of the trade that they would have been in, yes. the Black and Tans would have been keeping an eye on them as That's potential right. weapon makers and ones yes. that were involved. Yes, yes. And then all the locals coming into the forge, you know, talking. And <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a meeting place for the community, it was, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Especially wet days would be packed. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> 
Ja. Und der Gott. Ja, das war ja.